Welcome to Midweek Bible Study. Tonight is part five of our series, Becoming More Like Jesus. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we hope that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the Sanctuary of Syracuse. We appreciate everyone that does, and please share these with others. And if you're on Facebook, you can like and follow our page, the Sanctuary of Syracuse, and you'll be able to get our daily devotionals, our Sunday sermons, and also our midweek Bible studies whenever they're posted. Part five of our series is becoming more like of becoming more like Jesus is about the flesh versus the spirit. It's a struggle that all of us have, and all of us need to allow the Holy Ghost to help us so that we can overcome our own carnal nature. Paul describes the condition of our world in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. He said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. We're living in those days today. With all the unrest in our world, with all the things that are happening, my friend, we need to put our hand in God's hand more than ever before. He described it like this, verse 2, For men shall be lovers of them own, their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parent, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, um, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. And Paul said, from such turn away. He said, there's going to be a struggle in the last days, whether you're going to follow God or you're going to follow the ways of this world. Verse 6, he says, For of this sort are they that which creep into houses and lead cats, captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In that last verse, really a summary of what's going on. We're smarter than ever. We have more knowledge and more ability to get knowledge than ever, but yet we're not any better off. In fact, we could say that we're going the wrong direction because we're ever learning, but we're never able to grasp the truth, the truth of the Word of God. And so we live in perilous days, and the church is needed more than ever. And within the broader church, there is a great need among churches today, and that need is not necessarily a move of God's Spirit because we do need that, it's not necessarily a greater anointing. Miracle signs and wonders, yeah, those are great. We need those, but it's not the greatest need. Maybe you need a bigger facility, but even if you get a bigger facility, you still need more people, right? But not just people in general. You want people that are spirit-led. Maybe you've got financial trouble, and your church is struggling right now, and finances would be great, but is that the greatest need of the church today? These are all things that we have need of, but they have little impact in the world if we don't do one thing, if we don't allow God to lead us. Because if our life is filled with self and fleshly desires, we're going to have a lot of problems and a lot of issues. Romans chapter 1 talks about that. When individuals, they know God, but they don't acknowledge Him as God, then God eventually turns them over to a reprobate mind. There's a lot of issues that happen as described there in Romans chapter 1. So the greatest need of the church today is for there to be spiritual saints and spiritual preachers, spiritual teachers, spiritual men and spiritual ladies, spiritual young people, spirit-minded, not following the flesh, but following the spirit. You see, removing the carnality in each of our lives really is the greatest need of the church because then we can be a vessel that God will use. We can be a vessel that God will give, get, get honor from and get glory from, and we will, be, we will impact our world and be a great effectiveness in God's kingdom. So we've got to ask ourselves, am I full of other things? Other things than what God wants me to be full of? Because if I'm full of other things and I have no room to receive what God has for me, then 
those things will just wait. The things that God has will wait. Instead of being used by God, I'll just follow my own fleshly desires. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Don't be drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And God wants us to be Spirit-filled and Spirit-led believers in this day and this hour. And if you don't believe me, you just need to take a little while to look around. We need God today. We've got to have God leading us and guiding us. We've got to have God directing us. We've got to have his anointing in our lives and our hearts. And for that to happen, we need to remove the carnality and follow the things of the Spirit. Because when I'm empty and available, then the Spirit and the power of God can flow freely through me. And I can impact the world for him. It's a battle. Each of us have to decide, are we going to let God reign? Or are we going to let this world reign? Am I going to submit myself to the things of God and do what God wants me to do? Or am I going to walk according to my own flesh and be led according to the things of this world? Romans chapter 8, Paul tells us in verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So if you're finding yourself struggling today, there's a lot of things that are weighting you down and you don't understand why you can't get victory. Part of it could be that you're trying to do it through your own fleshly ability and not following the Spirit. Because God wants us to walk in the Spirit. When we follow the Spirit, when we allow the Spirit of God to forgive us and allow the presence of God to fill us, we follow the leading of God every day, we wake up in the morning, we ask God for direction and let him guide our steps and direct us. You, don't have, you won't have any condemnation. Yeah, the devil will try to keep things on you. He'll try to keep you under his, his previous, previous things that he's trapped you with. But my friend, when God sets you free, you're free indeed. Paul tells us, verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of, Christ, of life in Christ... Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. He said there's two laws here. There's the law of Christ and there's the law of sin and death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All of us know that scripture, but unfortunately we don't live that scripture out because we continue to do the things of the flesh and we continue to sin and do those things that are wrong and that battle rages within us. But God wants to give us victory and he wants to help us to become more like him. Verse 3, Romans chapter 8. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Paul's telling the Roman Christians that you've got to understand that there's this battle raging inside of you and you need to submit and surrender yourself to the Spirit. Don't walk after the things of the flesh because then you'll be condemned in your sins. But walk after the things of the Spirit and you'll be free in Christ. So will I walk according to my own ways or will I walk according to God's ways? Verse 5 continues in Romans chapter 8. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We've got to decide. Are we going to follow the things of God? Or follow the things of the world. And you know they're alluring to our flesh. They're alluring to our, our, our natural curiosities. But the problem is when you get caught up in the things of this world, when you get caught up in the lust of the eye, the things that you look at, oh, that would be so nice, or the lust of the flesh, the things that your flesh wants to do, or you get caught up in the pride of life, and you won't humble yourself, but you can do it, then you're going down the wrong road and you're not walking after the Spirit. 
this war goes on and we've got to decide, am I going to walk in the flesh or am I going to walk in the spirit? Paul goes on in verse number seven. He says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, Paul told the Roman Christians. He said, but the spirit, in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Paul said, you've got to walk in the spirit. And if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The battle rages. We've got to make sure we listen to the right voices. You see, carnal people, unfortunately, listen to the wrong voices. And they, uh, they fill their lives with things that attract and take them down a road that's not right. So who I listen to really will impact what I become. Thank you for listening to the Bible study today. Thank you for tuning into the devotionals. Thank you for being in church on Sunday. Wherever you're at today, if your church has church on Sunday or on Wednesday, whenever you have service, be there. Because you need to hear the voice of God. We need to fellowship with other people that will help us. We need to be accountable to others so that they can pull us up when we're down. And they can help us out when we're struggling. And they can encourage us when we're discouraged or they can strengthen us when we feel weak. That's why God's put us in the body. It's his body, and he wants us to be a part of that body, but you've got to listen to the right voice. And 24 hours a day, the world's voices scream out there. I know sports is really on pause right now, and it's sort of been a blessing, but there's all the other voices that are out there you can fill your life with the voices of social media. You can fill your life with the voices of politics. You can fill your life with the voices of all these other entertainments that's out there. And my friend, it's not going to satisfy. The pleasures of sin that are out there are only for a season. And then there's regret and there's remorse because you fulfilled your own desires and you're not fulfilled. You've done what you want to do, but yet there's no really pleasure in it. God wants you to hear the right voices. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he was writing to the young preacher Timothy. He said in verse 1, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. <coughs> Excuse me. He said the individuals, they will... They will listen to the spirits of this world. They'll also give heed the doctrines of devils. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. Paul said, there's going to be individuals out there in the last day that are going to try to get you out of the faith. And they're going to try to get you to draw you away from God. And they're going to tell you things that God hasn't said. And they're going to say, God said these things, even though God didn't say these things. That's why it's so important that we know the Bible and we go back to the Bible, because in the word of God, truth is revealed. The will of God is revealed. And we've got to listen to the right voices. Paul has given a warning to Timothy and said, this is what God is saying. God's spirit is saying that in the latter days, individuals are going to walk away from the church. They're going to walk away from the truth and they're going to tell others that are still in the church. Oh, you don't need that. You don't have to listen to that. That's not that important. Look at us. We're doing fine. By the mercy and the grace of God, they're still okay. God's drawing them back. They're just not listening. They're following the wrong voices. So be careful. Just because God is kind and he's long-suffering and he draws and he's patient doesn't mean that the individuals that walk away from the church are doing the right thing. They might even be prospering financially. They might look like they're having a great time. But my friend, we're all going to stand before God on that last day. We're going to be accountable for the things that we say and that we do. And we've got to listen to the right voices. 
So do you have a pastor in your life? Do you have someone that can speak into your life and help you? Do you have other people that are godly people that can speak to you and help you? Do you read and, and study the word of God for yourself? Are you listening to the right voices? Because carnal people, Paul said, listen to the wrong voices and they get led astray. You see, if I hear the wrong message and I listen to bad advice, I will follow my own desires. I will follow the flesh. I will leave the truth. I'll believe a lie. And unfortunately, I'll be damned. But I want to hear the right voices. Because spiritual people are submitted to God and they know the shepherd's voice. John chapter 10 tells us, Jesus said, I know my sheep and the sheep know me. They know my voice. And so I'm asking you today, listen to the voice of God. Hear what God has to say because God loves you so much and he doesn't want you to stray and get lost out in this world. Spiritual people listen and obey the voice of God. James chapter four, verse four, James talks about the two sides, whether it's the following the flesh or following the spirit. He uses some pretty harsh words. He said, ye adulterers and adulteresses, these people that follow the flesh and follow God, don't follow the word of God, he called them adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit dwelleth in us, it spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he said, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your, ye, your hearts, ye double-minded. Paul said, don't go to one side one day and the other side the other next day, but hear the voice of God. Submit yourself to the voice of God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And the Bible says he'll, he'll raise you up. He'll strengthen you. And then you can resist the devil. You see, resisting the devil only happens after you submit yourself to God. Because God always gives grace to individuals that are humble and will submit themselves. So if you find yourself today really struggling, maybe there's a temptation that you've fallen over and over again. And you know it's wrong. You know you shouldn't do it. You need to go back to God and just submit yourself to God and say, God, what do I need to do here? How do I need, what do I need to change? How do I need to live? What, what, do you, what do I need from you? And let God's spirit help you because God will help you. And you can overcome that. The question is every day when you get up, am I going to listen to the flesh or listen to the spirit? Am I going to walk in the flesh or walk in the spirit? You see, the weapons that God gives us are mighty through God. And the battle many times has fought within our mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. It says, though we walk, walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now, I know I've covered this before, but it's good to go over it again. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, the devil tries to build up strongholds in your life, and he makes you think that there's no way you're going to get over this. But Paul tells us, God's given us mighty weapons. And we don't have to walk in the flesh. We can war God's way and win and walk in the spirit. Verse five, what are those mighty weapons? First one is casting down imaginations. You see, it's not my ability. It's not my strength. It's not what I want that's important, but it's what God wants. And so I've got to submit myself unto God and cast down all those imaginations. And cast down every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verse 6 tells us, And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience 
when your obedience is fulfilled. Paul is telling the church of Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. These are scriptures that you probably ought to put to memory. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. We need to cast down imagination, submit ourselves to God, and be ready to be obedient, and we'll have victory. Because God will strengthen us. God will help us. We need to fight God's way. We need to give ourselves over to what God wants. God wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to be strong. And you'll find out those little victories are important because later on, God's going to allow you to conquer some bigger things and you'll draw just a little bit of encouragement from the past victories. And so don't take any victory for granted. When God gives it to you, be thankful. And then go on and let God help you. God wants us to mature so that we can handle the deep things of God. See, the Corinthian church had a lot of issues. That's why Paul wrote two lengthy letters to them, correcting a lot of things. They had a lot of issues. One of the things was they were worried about personalities and who was going to be over them. And so some said they're a Paul, some said they're Apollos, some said, and Paul said, you know what? We're all under Christ. We've got to follow Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, Brethren, could... He said, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I want to give you some, some better things, but unfortunately, I've got to deal with you as where you're at. And so he said, I'm going to talk to you in, uh, like baby Christians. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as other men? Paul said it's time to grow up. It's time to listen to the Spirit. It's time to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. He said, because I've got some better things for you. I've got some things that are going to strengthen you spiritually. But unfortunately, we always got to go back to the bottle and feed you the milk. Because you refuse to grow up and you walk around as a carnal individual, as a babe in Christ. You see, carnal men think carnal thoughts. They act in lustful ways. And they reap carnal rewards. But spiritual men allow God's Spirit to lead them into the depths of God's wisdom. And they operate in the supernatural. I want to be that kind of man. Ladies, I know you want to be that type of lady that we can allow ourselves to go deep in the things of God because God wants to help us today to become more like him. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to do that right now. If there's something in your heart, maybe there's something you've been struggling with, why don't you take some time? And as soon as this is over, why don't you talk to God for yourself? Because God knows where you're at. He knows what's going on. And he wants you to become more like him. Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity we've had to share for a few minutes. And we pray, God, that you just lead us and guide us and direct us and you help us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to tune in to your voice and to follow you. Thank you for those that have been listening today. And we pray, God, right now that you help them with their struggles, with their situations, and help them to grow. Help them not to discount anything that you tell us, told us to do, but help us to listen and to be obedient. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to be among other Christians that will, that will encourage us and that will strengthen us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be under your spiritual authority and under the authority of a pastor so that we can have safeguards that you provided for us. Move in our hearts and our lives, and we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And Jesus, if there's things in here that we've done wrong, I ask you to forgive us today because we need you. We need your strength. So Lord, fill us today. Forgive us today. And lead us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God hears your prayers. God knows where you're at. And God wants you to grow in him. He wants you to become more like him. He's torn the veil in the temple. 
You can go in the holy place anytime. He's given you an invitation to come to the throne and boldly present your needs to him. Take advantage of those opportunities. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. And have a wonderful day as you become more like Jesus.